All right, we are officially live for our Coyote First Step information session. Um, thank you everyone who is here and who has joined us. We are very excited to share this information with all of our brand new Coyotes coming to Cal State San Bernardino this fall. Um, so my name is Aurora Vilches and I am the coordinator for our Coyote First Step program here at Cal State San Bernardino. I am safely at home, sheltering in place per our governor's orders, working remotely, and coming to you live from my laptop. Um, we're really excited to, to share this information with you, answer all of your questions, and hopefully get you really excited to, to join us this summer. Um, so joining me, although you can't see her, is um, Ms. Jackie Garza from our admissions and outreach team. She is gonna help me facilitate and answer questions that any of you might have. So you can see at the bottom of your screen there is our questions and answers section. So at any time, you know, feel free to type away and chat and engage with me. And I'd love to, you know, answer those questions live. Um, Jackie also will be able to type in and respond if you need something in writing, maybe an email address um, and how to get in touch with me or the admissions team. So we're going to go ahead and get started again. I know we just started live broadcasting. It's it's three o'clock here and I, and I hope you're all safe at home um, and excited to be a coyote here at Cal State San Bernardino. Uh, so this fall is going to be a really big, challenging experience, not only as you transition from high school to being a college student, but in the in the midst of this pandemic, you know, it's just not something that any of us would have expected. And, and I really hope you're able to enjoy the moments that you have as you're completing high school and just ready to join in with us as we transition. So um, so here we are to talk about Coyote First Step. So what what is this program? What is it about? Why did you get invited? I'm here to answer any type of questions what the day is going to look like. So I'm going to go through my series of slides in this PowerPoint. And again, I would love for you to just type away some of those questions um, and chat away with us. And we have our support that will be able to help you with some of the technology things that are going on as well. So um, we'll go ahead and start with what is this program? What is Coyote First Step? So um, the STEP, S-T-E-P, is an acronym and it stands for Student Transition Enrichment Program. And it's really a, a transition program. So it's this bridge between ending your high school experience and transitioning into a college student. Um, so really to help you know what, um, what this experience is gonna be like and, and prep you. And we wanna give you all of the support that you need here so you feel comfortable with this transition. So again, we have that step is also that transit, uh, acronym, Student Transition Enrichment Program. But what was it created for and how, how it kind of came about is we have a grant um, and it's really focusing on students in their written communication and mathematical quantitative reasoning skills. So math and English, those are those two basic subjects that we know a lot of students sometimes can struggle with for various reasons, um, for wherever high school you're coming from, but we just want you to be prepared. Um, so in addition to this math and English experience, we also have the second kind of main part of the program is a lot of engaging activities des designed to support that transition, that going from high school and into college. And what does that mean for you as a student? So those are the two main parts. And I'll talk a little bit about what those two parts look like and each day what your program is going to look like and how this um, basically this daily schedule of this experience is going to look like. And um, you all should have received an invitation. Uh, if you're receiving this, if you're joining us on this live webinar, um, you got the email communication. So yay for you for checking your email. That's another uh, really important thing that, that you should be doing. So um, your invitation email indicated if you are recommended for the English component or the math component. So make sure just to read through your emails. You can always check in with us and our admission team, give us a call or send an email if you want clarification on which subject, because students will only do one or the other, but all students will engage in these fun activities. So what is this program gonna look like? Obviously we're moving into an online format for summer. Um, again, I mentioned earlier, just due to this pandemic, it's kind of flipped so many things upside down and I'm really feeling for you class of 2020 is probably not how you wanted to spend 
the last couple months of your high school uh, experience, but we're really hoping that you know you can transition and become a successful college student even though it will be in this virtual format. So everything will be online. Um, we're starting Monday, July 6th and going through Friday, July 17th. So it's a pretty short um, program, two weeks, not too big of a, a commitment. I think it's certainly something that all of you um, can, can commit your time to. The really the benefit of it is everyone is gonna earn a unit and a half, whether you do math or the English, a unit and a half of academic credit um, for, for each of you. So academically, you're going to get ahead. You're going to be starting the fall term with a couple of extra units under your belt and really setting you up for success. Um, this is a completely free program. So who can turn away free academic credit? You know, maybe something is going on in your life. You really can't commit the time. And I'll talk about what that time commitment looks like if you if you decide to join us. Um, but it's a really benefit to you to earn that credit, to gain this experience, to work on that transition between, you know, your high school experience to to college life. Um, so we are asking you, this is an invitation for those of you who are invited, and I'll talk a little bit about that criteria in the next slide, but we're asking you to commit approximately three hours each day. And this covers both that academic course, whether you're doing math or English, or the other activities supporting that transition. So about three hours a day during the two weeks. Um, I, in my opinion, think that's not too much to ask of you. We've been engaging with a lot of our students on campus right now. Maybe that's similar to what your distance learning experience looks like right now at a high school. Maybe it's less, maybe it's way more. Everyone is in a different um, situation here, but we hope that this is a reasonable amount of time. Um, and it should be a really fun, exciting a program. So what are those hours gonna look like and how, how did you get invited? A lot of people ask that kind of question so who was invited to participate? Um, if any of you have applied to multiple Cal States, you may have seen this little booklet. There's an image there. It's called Academic Preparation, Maximizing Student Success. So the CSU system has set up criteria for what we're looking for, not for just admission, but also to determine your academic preparation. So as a student, they're looking at you know, what kind of math did you take? What kind of English did you take? How many years did you take it? What was your GPA? Um, there's that section on the standardized tests. So all of you who took your tasks, your Smarter Balance Assessment last year and your junior year, we are looking at that assessment to help decide, you know, how prepared are you? Um, how comfortable do you feel in these subjects? So what I am encouraging you to do is kind of reflect on your academic performance and then that kind of helps look at why you received the invitation to join this program. We just really want to give you that extra bump to put you in a place where you're good and set to go. So when you get to your first term in fall, all students are going to take their GE math and English. And GE are like the general education requirements, what it takes to earn your bachelor's degree. And you'll get a lot of this information during your, in your advising and orientation. Um, but that's what we look at, is we want to set you up to be successful in your GE math and English. So that's how we decided who should be invited. And then if you were asked to participate based on this criteria, you were asked to do either that math or English. Um, so if anybody has any questions on their criteria, like why, why did I get this invitation? Or I think, you know, maybe I shouldn't be invited, or maybe my friend wasn't invited, or maybe my friend was and I wasn't. A lot of those questions come up, please reach out to us. Um, you know, our contact information for the admissions team, their staff, their staff is here to help and answer those and we can we can look up your information. Um, so any if any questions on that, I do see a question um, coming in about cell phones not supporting social media and to view from desktop laptop. Okay, that I think is to participate in this webinar. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one to Jackie if you don't mind helping out that question there. I think that's just to view the webinar going on right now. So I'm gonna move on to the next slide, which is about those courses. So who was invited? And then which subject would you be taking and what is this gonna look like? So we have three different courses that we're offering as a part of the Coyote First Step program, either that math course, 
the English course, and then all students will participate in this ESPU 1000 resource course. And so this resource course is something I'll delve into, and it's really some of those activities that are designed to promote and support that transition. So what I am going to talk about first a little bit is the math and the English. And we'll, we'll talk more about it, but just to give you an overview about math is really supporting students in that transition. So the math instructors are going to be focusing on number sense, algebraic thinking, problem solving, numerical and graphical representations of functions in the applied context. So there's a lot of good stuff going on, good refreshment, good set up to be in that fall GE course. And then English is a little bit more of a literature and analysis and, and some writing. Um, and so the difference between these two courses, and there's a note and there's some bold underlined words here in this slide, synchronous versus asynchronous. So we'll talk more about this because this is the part that can get really confusing. I mean, I don't blame you because not everything is the same, but in an online learning environment, some instructors will ask you to participate live and that is synchronous where everybody is at the same time so for example right now we're here live i'm, I'm at home doing this right now um, this is a synchronous setting so we're asking you to log on a, at a particular time and do the activities with everyone at the same time so that's what math is going to be like english the english course um that is being set up as asynchronous, so basically opposite, meaning not at the same time. Um, so the instructors will post things and put things together, and then you'll do it on your own time at your own pace. Obviously, there's deadlines um, and due dates and things like that, um, which may be a little bit more similar to what a lot of you are experiencing in your high school distance learning programs right now. Um, maybe some of you have more experience with a live synchronous setting. So there will be a difference if you're doing math and English. And again, our team is here to support you if you weren't sure which subject you were being invited to participate in. <clears throat> All right. And then this bottom half, this ESP 1000 course, this resource course, this is the one we are really excited about because this is where all students are going to be um, part of it, every whether you're doing math or English every day, this is synchronous and we're going to have awesome presentations um, and we're focusing on a couple different areas. Our three goals are connection, navigation and college skills. Connection meaning we want you to just connect with us, with the instructors, with the staff, with our peer mentors who are going to be a big part of this class. So students just like you who've gone through this program or who are current students at CSUSB, um, so you can get to know them and make those connections. And then, hey, you'll know somebody when school starts in the fall. Um, and then navigation, we want you to know a little bit more about what it means to, you know, get on this campus, use some of the resources that we have. And then college skills, just some, some things that will really help you, kind of knowing what those differences are between high school and college and, you know, talking to professors and managing your time and study skills and creating planners. So we've got a lot of fun activities for that. Um, so that will be every day, all students will participate in that. All right, so I have a question coming in. What if we're not too great at math, but still choose it? Is that okay? Just so we get the help. Yes, so again, you were invited for a particular subject. So double check your email that came in notifying you about the program. If it will say you are recommended for math, then we want you to do math. Um, or it may say you're recommended for English. So go ahead and try to follow that. If you have any questions about what you were recommended to do, then that's when we want you to go ahead and call into us and, and ask us questions or send an email to our admissions and outreach team. All right, so hopefully that answers that question. Moving on to the next, look at what I did here. I got a little bit more specific about synchronous and asynchronous because I just really wanted to um, focus in on this and really explain. So the synchronous, as I mentioned, is at the bottom is in a learning environment where everybody participates at the same time. And then Asynchronous is those different times. So online instruction just means everything's happening over the internet. 
but you have to know whether it's those required t- login times or asynchronous, meaning you know at your own pace. And I'll talk a little bit about the technology piece um, because I know that might be um, a concern. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through. There's a couple other questions here. <clears throat> Support program, struggling students. I'm not sure what a struggling student is. I think all students might struggle. I know as a college student myself, it was a, an adjustment, a, a transition, right? So no matter what, every student has what they need to succeed. And sometimes they need to access some resources to make sure they don't struggle as much as they may have without those resources. So again, this program is designed for the students based on some academic performance measures. But I will tell you, every single student who's invited to this program is an admitted CSUSB student. So you have met our admission criteria. You are college worthy. You are going to be a coyote for life. You're part of our family and you are that college material. You are. Every student who's been receiving their admission letters, you're in. Um, So there's no question about your academic capabilities. We are just trying to identify some students that we want to make sure you don't have as much struggles as maybe some other students. Hopefully that makes sense, but I'd love to speak with you more if you have any more of those types of questions. All right. Um, Trying to mark here some of these answers. And there's another question here about being invited for English, but you applied for math. So um, I would recommend that you, you go back and notify us. That's a unique situation for you as an individual. So um, I'm gonna leave that here and I can send you an email after the presentation. All right, talking about confirmation, I'll, I'll go on to that. And talking about, again, your SAT scores um, as being already submitted and what it is. So I can go um, to that criteria again, is really specific. Let me just show you this screenshot of this image right here. This academic preparation booklet you may have received from your high school counselor. It is on our program website. When you open it up, it gives exact SAT scores, exact GPA scores, different things like that that would have um, met that criteria. So you are encouraged to review that. Um, but I can certainly send an email to you directly after this presentation. So some of these questions might be a little bit unique to you um, that will need an individual answer. So thanks for the questions coming in. Please feel free to continue to send them. They're very helpful for me to kind of understand and know where you're at. So that way we can, um, you know, make sure we're addressing all of your concerns. So what does your day look like if you decide to join the program? So as I mentioned, English is here as asynchronous, so there's no scheduled time for that, but it's gonna be approximately an hour and a half each day. Then math, we have two different time slots. So on the registration, many of you may have seen that you pick math and it just says nine to 10 or 10, 15 to 11, 15. We're gonna go ahead and select the time slot that works based on availability and we're gonna fill them all up before we move into the next slots. And you'll get a confirmation email as we get closer for which specific time slot you're going to see. And I'll talk about a couple of other things that you're going to have to do before the program starts. And knowing which time slot you're in will be important. So that's one hour. And then, as I mentioned, everybody has this ESPU 1000 resource class. So you are going to, everyone will do that synchronously for an hour and a half from 1245 to 210. And don't worry, there's a small little break in between there because I know an hour and a half can seem like a long time. Um, uh, There's another question about the math program, when the synchronized schedule will be given to you. So as I mentioned, we're going to send you an email shortly after, um, uh, shortly before the program begins, probably about a week and a half before the program begins, you'll get your schedule. So you'll know which time frame you're going to be asked to participate in and what that looks like. Okay. All right. And then for those in math, so so this math lab in the afternoon applies only to our math students. Every day between 2.30 and 4.30, you will have a designated time slot for 30 minutes to check in with your math tutor. So all of the math courses have a math instructor and two math tutors that are part of the program. Um, And then the afternoon math lab will be to check in. So you will either check in Monday and Wednesday for 30 minutes or Tuesday and Thursday 
for 30 minutes, sometime between 2.30 and 4.30. So maybe it's 3 to 3.30, maybe it's 4 to 4.30. You'll be given a designated time slot. And again, same with in the morning, knowing which class you're gonna take, that's gonna come to you about a week and a half before the program begins. So I'm giving you these times now because we wanna make sure you understand um, what the time commitment is. So for the math, it does add up to about an hour and a half. And then that resource class, another hour and a half. So you're looking at, those are the, that's the three hours a day. So it, it's pretty reasonable. Um, you'll get really specific information from the instructors and the math tutors. All right, I'm checking in on some questions before moving to the next slide. How many credits does it cover? So everyone, whether you do math or um, English, you are going to earn 1.5 quarter units. So um, nobody will earn more than that. It'll be 1.5 for math or 1.5 for English. Um, and that's academic credit bearing units. And you're gonna use those credits for your total degree completion. So every bachelor's degree, similar to your high school, requires a certain number of units. And it, it changes by major, but everyone's about 180 units. So here is a unit and a half for free for you this summer through Coyote First Step. So it's really a good deal. All right, checking in, how, who is your advisor for doing your schedule? You're new and you'll enter this semester and you need help for your classes. So I'm assuming that this question is referring to your fall classes. That's gonna be gone over during your orientation. Um, so I'm gonna speak briefly about the orientation um, toward the end of this presentation, because there's another question here about this program interfering with your um, orientation. So I will address those questions shortly. So great questions coming in, keep them going. Um, and I see a lot of questions here, so good. There's another question about a unit and a half for English plus the time added to finish work or the hour and a half within the hour and a half. So English, we're planning approximately an hour and a half for you to, to do all of the assignments and whatever the requirements are. Um, everybody's a little bit different. Maybe there's a writing assignment and you might take a little bit longer than someone. So it's hard to say you're only going to work for an hour and a half every day, but it's, it's an approximate. So hopefully that answers your question regarding the English class. And then you will certainly know um, some of this information at that week and a half before, as I mentioned, you'll get more specifics about your class and some outreach from your instructor. So you'll, you'll get to know a little bit more of that. All right. So moving on, so this is the daily schedule of what is required for you. Again, approximately those three hours each day. But I do wanna share one other fun, exciting thing with you that we are incorporating and adding into this program is every day at lunch, we're gonna have optional lunch activities. So the three hours I mentioned before with your academic course and the resource course, ESP 1000, that's expected participation in order to, assess success, ugh, to successfully complete this program. Now, every day you're also gonna be highly encouraged and recommended and um, our peer mentors are gonna bug you and say, hey, log on during lunchtime every day, you're gonna get a break from 11.30 to 12.30, where we want you to grab your lunch and sit in front of your computer and just enjoy some fun activities. So we've got this art activity going on. You can see a little screenshot of one that happened earlier this spring quarter with our current students. We've got a cooking lesson scheduling. We're gonna do some speed friending with our associated students, ASI, which is our student body. We've got a virtual club scavenger hunt plan. So if you're interested in maybe joining some clubs or organizations, you're gonna to get to learn more about that. So again, these are um, optional lunchtime activities, but you're really encouraged to participate in them. You're gonna get a schedule um, of all of this stuff of what at each day is, so you can make a decision for yourself um, if you wanna join in during the lunch activity for that day. All right, looking here at some questions, there's a question about a laptop, which I will talk about next in the next slide. A question here, what if we change our major? Would that affect the two summer classes? Potentially, yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a second to speak about this question. And I'm gonna move my slides back up here to this courses. So that math course, this is gonna help you and each group is gonna be, and why we have those two slot time slots 
I don't know if you remember, you saw, let me just, oh, let me go to the right one so you could see the time. So nine o'clock to 10 o'clock or 10, 15 to 11, 15, we have two different time slots. Um, and the reason is, is because there's gonna be specific math courses based on your major. And I know this person has asked a question about changing your major. So we pretty much grouped them into two slots. If you are in a math intensive major or a STEM major, um, you're gonna be in one group. And if you're in a non-STEM major, you're gonna be in another group. So if you're STEM and in the sciences, biology, chemistry kind of majors, those courses, that math class is gonna help you with the fall GE math class you're gonna take when you, when you start with the with the university in the fall. So this math class will help you set up for that. If you're in a non-STEM major, there's a different math class that'll help you set up for those GE math courses because they are different GE math courses. So depending on your major, it is, so it's important when you are filling out your registration to indicate your major because that's how we will kind of help you pick the correct math course. Um, if you decide to change your major, this summer math course is not gonna hinder that or there won't be any negative impact for that so it's okay it will help you if you are in the correct math section um so think of it as if if you're moving from stem to non-stem that would be the only way it might have more of an impact but if you're going to change maybe from one math intensive major to another math intensive major you're, you're probably okay but if you're in a, I don't know, biochem major, and then you're thinking about becoming a communication studies major, that's going from STEM to non-STEM. So that might impact. So think about that. Um, and you can certainly speak to your math instructor in the summer to help you with that, um, if you're concerned at all about that. So this student is asking a question about changing from criminal justice to communications. So, Criminal justice is part of our social and behavioral sciences major, um, and communications is part of our arts and letters majors. So you um, should be okay. Neither of those are considered STEM or math intensive, so, so that'll be okay. But that's a kind of an example where if you're concerned, reach out to us directly and we can, we can help you out with that. All right, so we talked about those optional lunch activities, which really encourage you to all participate and do. I'm gonna move on to next tech registration and talk a little bit about technology. Clear my throat there, thanks, sorry. <laughs> All right, so this goes to the person who does not have access to a laptop, which is completely common. And I know a lot of you receive support from your high school. We are gonna support you as well. So yes, we are here and we will be able to provide you laptops. So we are going to um, get you uh, access to any technology that you may need. So please, you know, express what technology you need in your registration form. So our deadline is June 15. So we just opened May 15, um, which was about a week ago from today. Um, and we already have, you know, a close to 175 students participating. So you're encouraged to submit your registration before June 15. In the registration form, we ask you what technology you need. Do you need a laptop? Do you need a hotspot? Does, do you need a webcam? Uh, maybe you have a laptop but no webcam, or maybe you don't have you know, either. We, we are here to support you. As I mentioned previously, it wasn't on a slide, this Coyote First Step program is funded by a grant, so that's why it's free to all of you. So all of these resources are gonna be free to you as well. So the laptop lending program is something the university offers. We'll purchase hotspots and pay for the uh, monthly service fee while you're in the program as well. So we definitely wanna support you and make sure you have everything that you need to be successful. So to pick up these materials, we have some designated dates here. Um, and if you've already registered, your automatic confirmation email said that yes, um, we, we received your confirmation email, we received your request, and here's some important dates and other things you need to be aware of. So this is the dates, July 1st and 2nd, so just mark your calendars. 
Um, we want you to stop by campus if you're able to. If you have any difficulties, that's where I want you to reach out to me individually as a program coordinator, send me an email, I'm gonna express any concern. So we're gonna practice social distancing and use safe and healthy measures. You know, Please wear a face mask when you drive through. We're gonna give you more instructions once you've registered and, and give you all those details. Um, so be on the lookout for that after you register. So you'll be picking up technology here on this day. And then we also are gonna be picking up some welcome materials from the program. So there's a question here and you may have seen it inside of the um, uh, registration. Sorry, if you already done that, the questions about your t-shirt size so and your mailing address. So we have a free program t-shirt for all of you who participate in the program. And this is also something that you would pick up during the these designated days to pick up materials. So um, we have a welcome bag that's gonna have like a folder. Um, we'll print out your syllabus for the class and any handouts that instructors might wanna give you. Um, and we'll put that in this bag that will come with a t-shirt and some other fun, cool CSUSB swag items, along with your technology, if you've requested any of that. So those are the designated dates. If you're attending our Palm Desert campus, um, that's only one day, but our San Bernardino campus, we have two days. So one day will be in the morning and one day will be in the afternoon. It is possible that these dates may change. And I, I really, I apologize now, um, but we're trying to com confirm all of this as soon as possible. So once we hit the registration deadline of June 15, a communication will go out to all of you confirming um, specific time. If you have any trouble with these dates or times, again, please reach out to me directly um, and we'll make adjustments and, and try to figure out something for you so you can still be successful and have all of the things that you need. I'm gonna say this now to make sure that everybody hears this. Aside from the technology, all of the welcome bag materials, if you do not pick them up, it's not going to hinder your successful participation. So if you don't have a t-shirt, it doesn't mean you're not gonna do well in the program. If you don't pick up the folder, all of the documents are gonna be digitally available to you in your online class. So there's nothing that you're not already gonna get, if that makes sense. Um, we just wanted to give you this as something extra tangible to have in your hand. So I hope I hope that um, answers your questions regarding picking up of the items. So we have a couple questions coming in. Um, do we have to go pick up the materials if you don't need a laptop? And as I mentioned, um, you do not need to have a t-shirt or the welcome folder to be successful in the program. It might be nice. So if you'd like the t-shirt and the welcome folder, please come through. If you're okay not having it, and again, it's not gonna prevent you from being successful in the program, then that's fine as well. Um, so, so that should answer your question. All right, somebody said they already filled out the registration. Um, and they didn't need any technology, but it turns out they do need something. Go ahead and email me directly or anybody from our admissions and outreach team. Um, respond to that registration email and make edits. Please do not fill out the registration form again, because I don't want you to look like another student requesting to participate. So just respond to that email and ask to make any edits to your registration if you've already submitted it. All right. Looking through some more questions here. Um, can we still get the swag even if you don't need any technology? Yes, we would like you to come. If you can come to any of these dates um, to pick up your welcome bag, please do. That's what the invitation is. It's for both the swag items like your t-shirt and the welcome bag and the technology piece. So come for both. If you need both, come for one or the other if you just need the welcome items and not any technology, that's fine as well. All right, so moving on to the next slide, there's some more um, questions here about majors. Some of these, um, I'm gonna go ahead and Jackie, if you don't mind, assign some of these as following up later because they're specific to majors. Um, and I can reach out to students individually after, okay? 
All right, moving on. So some reminders and talking about orientation as well. So please do not forget June 1st, which is coming up. If you have not already paid your $100 enrollment confirmation deposit, that is due. Um, it's non-transferable and it's um, non-refundable, but it is required for you to confirm your admission with us at CSUSV. And although the registration form will allow you to request participation in Kaidi First Step, uh, if you put no, you have not paid it yet, know that June 1st is still the deadline. So we will not be able to enroll you if you haven't paid that yet. But please reach out to us if you're having any financial concerns or if there's any issues with paying the $100. We wanna help find a solution for you, especially if we know you wanna participate in Coyote First Step. So, so please reach out to us. All right, the next deadline, there are two things happening on the same day. Um, first is to make sure to submit your final official high school transcripts. I know there are some allowances being made within the admission office due to circumstances with the pandemic. So if you already have a unique situation and that's covered, you know, ignore me. Or if you need to reach out to someone from our admissions and outreach team, please, please do. Let them know if there's going to be any issues. But also on June 15 is the deadline to register for orientation. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So everyone, all students, if you're a first time freshman or a transfer student, must participate in orientation. It's part of the um, admission criteria. They can't fully admit you until you've completed that. So I really encourage you to please, please, please um, make sure that you are registered for orientation. Now, there was a question earlier. Um, there's a question now asking how. Um, it's in My Coyote. Go to Tasks. Um, click in My Coyote and click on Tasks, and then you'll see Orientation. And so go ahead and register for your orientation there. And as you know, the dates of Coyote First Step are July 6th to July 17th. So you need to be in an orientation session before Coyote First Step starts or after Coyote First Step ends. We don't want any confliction or overlapping um, because we have synchronous live components for Coyote First Step and there are synchronous live components for orientation. So you can't be logged on to two places at once, unfortunately. Um, so the, there are some dates before July 6th, but it, I believe I've heard from orientation that they're full now. Um, so you would have to register in any session after July 17th at, the, at this point. Um, so if anybody has already registered for orientation and you know you have a conflict, it is very simple, it's not a problem. We can just have you transfer your date and the orientation office can help us do that. And I've already helped a couple of students already complete that. Um, we just need to change your session. So you can't do it on your own, unfortunately. It's the orientation team that needs to make that swap for you. So you'll have to send an email requesting for that change and they'll go ahead and process it on their end, on the back end. So what you need to do is contact their office or contact any of us, admissions, outreach, or to myself with Coyote First Step. And we'll make sure to get you in touch with the right person to get you into the next open session if you do need to make changes. There's a student here who has a question about orientation, um, but I believe Jackie's answered that one. So great, thanks, Jackie. All right, um, so please, please make sure that you meet these deadlines and let us know if you're having any issues or concerns with that, um, meeting those deadlines. All right, so this is the last part of the program. I wanted to open it up to all of the questions. I know we've answered a lot going through, um, but I want us to give us the last, you know, 15 or so minutes to make sure to answer. So um, I will also recap um, kind of some of the things that we've talked about. Most importantly, that's my name um, and my email address. So screenshot it, uh, snapshot it, whatever, uh, copy that. If you need to reach out to me directly, I'm, I'm definitely here to support you and answer any questions if you're concerned. But really this program is here to give some extra support to some students in either math or English based on that academic performance in high school. 
Um, we want to help you in your transition from being a high school student to being a college student. And it's a big transition. So we want to make sure you're comfortable and prepared and, and ready to do that. Um, and then we really want to make sure you're having fun as well. We want to make it engaging and exciting and really informational. So when you move into a college setting, there's so many resources, so many activities. There's so many departments and programs. You know, I know sometimes in high school, you think like everything's evolved around like ASB and clubs, but take that and magnify it by like 50 at the college level or more. Um, depending on your high school. We really want you to have fun and be engaged. It's so much more than just your academic courses. But of course, we want you to be successful in your academic courses as well. Um, so this program really highlights some of the key services that are here to support your academics. Um, and so you're gonna get this extra leg up and help over the summer to learn about what those are. So you're joining us in fall as like totally prepared and ready to start that college life. So um, again, I kind of mentioned them, the peer mentors are really here to support you. You'll make some connections with them. They're an invaluable resource, um, you know, learning those tips and tricks. All of them right now are doing distance learning right in the spring term. So they're really experts on what it means. So they're gonna be able to provide you some awesome tips on how to prepare for a virtual fall. Um, semester and, and being in an online college course. So that's going to be a really benefit as well. All right, going through some of these questions um, that are down here. Thanks for, for sending these in. That's at this time, just throw in any question. Um, where can we double check when we registered for orientation? Jackie, I'm going to go ahead and let you check, check on that one. I know it's in my coyote. Um, so you filled out for housing. Okay, I have a question for housing. So Jackie, I'm gonna let you assign that one as well, sorry. And another question uh, off topic about financial aid. That's okay, all questions are relevant, nothing's off topic. Everything is about you coming to CSUSB in the fall. And we knew this would happen. So we are, and that's where Jackie's coming in and, and trying to help assign your questions to a specific person, especially when it comes to the specifics like your financial aid status or your housing application or um, majors, you know, maybe something might be unique to you. So you'll have to provide your student ID number to somebody to look up your exact situation. Um, so unfortunately, I can't answer all of those questions in this live webinar, but um, many of them we can. So a good question here, technology, is it free? Yes, uh, everything in this program is free. So your academic course, the unit and a half for either the math or English, that is free. You're not paying for that. If you need technology to support you while you're in this online program, a laptop, um, a, a webcam, a hotspot for internet, all of those things we are providing free. So students are not gonna pay out of pocket for anything. Um, normally we do have this program in person on campus. So we're, we're shifting into this virtual experience. I would have always had to say the caveat of like, well, you might have to pay for parking and different things like that. But now it's really complete, completely, completely free. So that's, that's a plus for you all um, to avoid some of those parking expenses and fees for any cars you might have. Um, so please go ahead and, um, Make sure that you're sharing this with your family. If you have family members that are listening, parents, free is great, right? So um, I encourage you to sign your student up for this if you have not already signed up for it um, and make sure that um, take advantage of these benefits. All right, going through, there's some other questions um, that I'm gonna have. Um, Jackie, help me. So will these slides be available anywhere else for further presence? Yes, we are actually gonna post the recording of this webinar and the slides on the website. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, you can rewatch it or share it with somebody else. Or if you have a family member or a parent who needs to watch it, or maybe you're a parent today only and your student needs to watch it. Um, so make sure that everyone who needs this information can get this information. All right, looking to see if we can. Okay, great question. I love this question. How can we join clubs or is that not possible for the fall since we're going virtual? It is absolutely possible to join a club in our virtual format. 
all of the departments on campus are working so hard right now to transition everything to an online experience. As I mentioned, all of our students right now for spring quarter are all in an online setting. So all of them are doing their fun, engaging club and organization stuff um, in an online setting. So today the university had this awesome women's leadership conference all online. So it's completely possible and there's fun things that you can still do. So don't look at being in an online setting as a completely negative thing. It's just a new experience. Um, so instructors are working really hard and getting additional training on making technology, learning technology to make it fun and engaging. Um, so we're really um, doing our best to make it a very meaningful experience. We know college is a very important time in your life and we don't want you to feel like you're gonna lose out just because it's gonna be in this new virtual format. So um, many of you should have received the email, I think two days ago from President Morales, kind of reassuring that, that yes, all of the services, all of our fun clubs and orgs, all of our engaging activities are still gonna be available in a virtual format. So, so please be on the lookout, please be encouraged that you can participate in that and, and know that you can still have a meaningful experience. All right, another question here specifically about some SAT scores. Again, we can touch base on that specifically with you. Um, I think that's all the questions in the queue that have been the most recent ones. Others will just, Jackie, if you could just assign those as later follow-up. All right, well, I will. Yay, thanks for the comment. Can't wait to join a virtual club. Yes, I think I think that'll be a good experience. Um, again, my contact information is there. I'm here to support you. Our admissions and outreach team is here to support you. Um, I hope you found this webinar informational. Um, you know, changing times. It, it's a little awkward not seeing you all here. Normally we would host these in person. Um, you know, make last summer, I, I went to a couple high schools and shared this information. So it's just, it's not the same for me either. <laughs> not the ideal situation, but I hope you're still feeling like you've received information, that you're confident in what it means to participate in this program, that you um, know the benefits of deciding to participate. You know, it's completely optional. So a lot of students received invitations. We'll see who says yes, says yes and, and signs up. Um, those are the students we know that are gonna step up and do the little bit of extra work and will really benefit in the long run. Um, so definitely a skill to, to build upon and, and participate and get engaged. All right, so I'll leave. One more question. Oh, not a question, but a thank you for giving us this useful information. You're very welcome. Um, I hope it was helpful. Yes, a lot of comments about being helpful. So yay, good. Uh, again, my contact information, I'm here to support you. Um, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and, and sign off um, and conclude this presentation. So thank you everyone. We really appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you in our virtual setting for Coyote First Step this summer. Bye-bye.